Hey guys, welcome back to CNS Corvettes. This is Lyle, a beautiful rainy Sarasota County today. Uh, thankfully, my IT guy has been putting together some of the footage we brought back from Corvettes at Carlisle 2022, and he's assembled some really cool montages of bits of our walkthrough that Steve and I spent three days doing there. So today's video, the first video, is we're gonna show you the, C, the Pratt & Miller uh, C5, C6, and C7R race cars and tell you a little bit about them. Then we're gonna wander over to the GM tent to look to get a look at the new Z06 and stop by the Callaway tent and see some of the stuff they've got going on. So just follow along. I hope you enjoy it. We'll talk to you after the video. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we do that, do your like, subscribe, super thanks, thumbs up, whatever you can do to help us. Again, that lets us grow the channel, costs you nothing, helps me out. Let's get back to it. All right, guys, here we are with the C5R chassis number 001. This car was built in 1998, just months before its racing debut at the 99 24 Hours of Daytona, where it found success right out of the gate, placing second, wearing a black and silver GM Goodwrench livery. It was raced five times in 1999, with its worst finish being fifth at Road Atlanta. Its biggest accomplishment, however, was racing the 24 Hours of Le Mans, wearing the 63 in June of 2000. This is C5R serial number 004. It was first raced at the Rolex 24 at Daytona in 2001, famously driven by Andy Pilgrim, Kelly Collins, and Dale and Dale Jr. By the end of 2002, it had posted two wins, seven second place finishes, and more than 25,000 racing miles. Sadly, also the only the last car Dale Sr. would finish a race in. This is the C5R chassis number 008 and 009, built specifically to win Le Mans for the Corvette 50th anniversary. You can see the other one on the background there. Um, they had some team problems and sadly they finished second and third rather than the hope for one two. This is C6R GT2 serial number 005. Won the 2013 American Le Mans series. Uh, it was driven by Jan Magnuson, Antonio Garcia and Jordan Taylor. It won three races, earned five podiums and was just a general badass. I saw it race live at Sebring several times. And right behind it you can see the C7R chassis number 004 still kept in the exact condition it was in when it came off the track after its last race. It won both the 2016 Rolex 24 Daytona and the 12 Hours of Sebring. Uh, won at Lime Rock, which was Corvette 100th win. Total of four victories, seven podium finishes, and winner of the 2016 IMSA GT Le Mans Championship. And I love it when they keep them dirty like they came off the track. I still think the C7R is probably one of the most aggressive, mean looking race cars of the modern era and it was a real honor to stand next to this one. Here we are in the GM tent, guys, and GM had brought an entire trailer load of Z06 Corvettes. Um, I'm gonna walk around in here and show you some of the highlights. Here's another attendee who just sitting in there and enjoying his time inside the new Z06. Uh, as you can see, uh, some really cool colors, really awesome wheels. Uh, the cars really had a presence. They started them up and revved them several times, and I mean, it's very different. Check this out. This is a GM cutaway of a C8 Corvette, showing the structure, uh, everything that lies underneath all the trim, so you can get an idea of what goes into building the strength and rigidity into this car that the C5, 6, 7, and now 8 have been famous for. Um, taking a look from the back, you can see the LT2 sitting in there comfortably, the transaxle, uh, a lot of the aluminum bracing back there, which is really impressive. I mean, you know, I've had a lot of Corvettes apart in my time and nothing even close to this intricate. Um, this is a step above. Skipping over to the Callaway tent, uh, we had a chance to talk with Reeves Callaway, the son of the founder and now the owner of the company. Um, they had a couple of C8s there that they were uh, talking about. They introduced, actually at Carlisle, a brand new product that I'll do another video on uh, here in the future. Um, they are offering a supercharged kit for the C8 under the Callaway name. Callaway's always been known for performance, but they're also known for reliability and not affecting the manufacturer warranty. And they won't talk specifics yet, but they're thinking it's going to cost somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand dollars to do the conversion and give you somewhere between six hundred and six hundred and fifty horses. That's not a bad deal, especially when you're dealing with a company that knows its stuff. Ooh. Here's a quick picture of the LT5 Z06 engine. Um, 
has a hand built by so and so nameplate on it, which I can't read right now, but that was cool. Um, it just these cars have such a presence. I mean, it's really different, especially looking at the rear quarters, how wide they are, the larger openings in the back, and of course the Z06 badging there. Uh, you know, you still have all your storage space, just like in the regular C8, but this car means business, and you can see that lovely carbon fiber dash trim in there. And here is Lucky Steve uh, sitting in one of the new Z06s. Uh, he thought that he liked it a lot. And I think everybody in this, who's watching this video should comment that Steve needs to buy a C8 for the shop. Uh, I keep pushing for that, and, but I don't have the money to do it. But Steve, I, I'm telling you, we need one of these cars to play with and improve on and see what we can do. And the only reason I didn't get in was because the battery was out of the car and I couldn't move the seat. Anyway, that was a brief look at some of the cool stuff we saw down on Manufacturer's Row at Corvette Carlisle. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.